Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to talk to Vikas Hussein, who has written an application called Football Stats Direct, which uses APIs and AG Grid to help people who like football. Uh, not something I know something about, but uh, Vikas will educate me. So hello, Vikas. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for talking about your app. So you are AG Grid, JavaScript developer, C Sharp developer. Angular developer, React developer, and now a mobile game developer. That's a lot of stuff to be covering. Yep, I uh, try to do a bit of everything. Started off early in my career working on a lot of .NET and C Sharp and JavaScript. Um, moved on to Angular development, then on to React development. Tiny bit of Vue development, just a bit of everything here and there really, but my entire career mostly has been focused on working with JavaScript and now, yes, working at AG Grid, doing a bit of everything here and there. Um, love the grid, and I wanted to use it in one of my personal projects. Cool. So Football Stats Direct, um, people can find it at footballstatsdirect.com, and we'll put links okay. in descriptions and things. And you blog at vicas.co.uk. You're lucky yep. enough to get a domain that matches your name completely. Uh -huh. um, so uh, what is Football Stats Direct? How did it come about? Football Stats Direct is basically it's a it's a website where you can view all stats from the top five European leagues. Um, you can view stats about the teams or individual players instead using AG Grid. Um, so these this data can be available at other places. Um, maybe not for all top five European leagues, or maybe just specifically such as the English league or the Spanish league. But what is so great about this is the data is displayed in AG Grid, and we can use the, the grid to do all sorts of data transformations, which we can see later, um, whether that's row grouping, filtering, um, moving the columns around, and especially pivoting, which makes it a really powerful tool to really dig deep into the data. Okay, so do you want to put it up on screen so that we can see it? Because I will edit in excerpts of Football Stats Direct before this, but if we get it up on screen, then you can demonstrate it and talk about it let's do that now so this is it um it's very simple I'm just going to refresh the page go back to the beginning so you come to here you are displayed first the uh, default the english premier league um here we are simply looking at the league table um a few stats such as the games you played the number of points you've won um the games you've won drawn and lost etc so these are simple stats that you can find anywhere and then if we go in here and click on show stats then we just insert a few more columns into there where you can see some more uh, in-depth stats such as the games that you've lost away and home um, and the gold you've let in home and away. What we can then also do is click these buttons here, which will then um, have data, different data within the grid. So this for the Spanish league, look at the data for the Italian, the French and the German league, or this is one uh, good, really good feature of it. I can view all top five European leagues to so get the data from all the top five leagues in the single grid so you can analyze them together. Um, we dig slightly deeper here. We have some more filters here. So for example, top 20 scorers. So I was, I'm still on top five European leagues there. So I'm seeing all the top 20 scores from the top five European leagues. If I click on just English Premier League, now I see just the top 20 scores from the English Premier League. Um, so, and then I could look at the 20 assists, the most yellow cards and the red cards as well to look at all the players and how they're performing within each specific league or the top five European leagues. Now, my favorite feature of all of this is I can think of top five European leagues and instead of looking at top 20 goal scorers or assisters, etc., I can just click on all players. Now I have access to every single player within the, uh, the top five European leagues and I can do all sorts of data analysis with this. Um, for example, I could look at the number of goals they've scored, the assists, the appearances, the minutes, and many other stats. I've still got show stats click. I'm just going to click that so we don't see too much stuff. But we can see all sorts of stats here and we can perform some great in-depth um, data analysis using this. Um, then there's a few other filters here. I've got filtered down by team. This is a bit verbose, but for example, I wanted to look at Juventus. I could click on Juventus and just see the Juventus players. Um, similarly, I can click on Napoli, see on the Napoli and click it again. And it will take me back to having all the players there. So that's basically what Football Stats Direct is. Cool. So you have got a 
back end and a front end, and all the code is available on GitHub. Like you've released the code so anyone can see it, which is um, generous, which is good. Yes. And which parts were making API calls there? Um, when you filter by team and the icon, is that doing an API call to filter or is that just filtering on the grid itself? Good question. So what is happening here? Let's, I'm going to go back right back to the beginning. I refresh. Um, so when I click on each of these buttons, these will go make an API call to Firebase, which is where my data is actually stored for all of this, all the data for um, this website is stored. This will go to, yeah, so this will go to each, we'll go to uh, make an API call to Firebase and get the data. Click on, on these, um, click on, on these buttons, or similarly, make an API call, get the data. The only time you don't make a call to the API is when you click on filtering by teams. So if I click on, on Roma, for example, we can see here, the club has a filter now. So all this does, clicking on these buttons, is filtering the data within the grid using the grid API. Um, so let's, if we unclick that, we see club now again, um, and then we click on, okay, these, let's go on English probably begins there. If you click on Manchester United, we can see here a filter has been applied to the grid uh, where it contains Manchester United. So that's how it's filtering there. But so the, these two rows make API calls, this row filters the grid. Cool. And you, we're building this as a hobby project, so you didn't have a lot of time to build it. In the blog post you wrote for this, and we'll put a link in the description, you mentioned that it took you about two weeks in your spare time to build this. And is that because the grid gives you so much functionality that you can make it relatively easily? I'm not trying to put down the programming effort involved, <laughs> but uh, some of it, like all the filtering, because you can now um, group by dragging the column headers into the top there. And all of that is provided by AG Grid. You could group by nationality. Fun. One thing that I did find great about it is because I do have a ton of experience using AG Grid and working in depth with AG Grid. So it does make a lot of the things very easy. Um, so a few, things that, a few things that you could just do right out of the box is give it the data and let it display, such as the points, the plate, th these sorts of things are easy. Other things that are slightly more tricky is, for example, the team renderers. See here, if you look in the team name, I have Manchester City along with their team logo and for all the other teams. Similarly, for each of the players, I have a picture of the player along with their name. Um, and then it becomes even more difficult when you have a custom cell renderer to then group it by this. So if I want to group by Liverpool, I could simply grab the column, drag it into here, and now we see that it's grouped by the, each club for the top 20 scores in the English Premier League. So we have the three players here for Liverpool, and then for Tottenham, for Leicester, et cetera. So while working on my spare time, a few things, it would have taken me a lot longer than two weeks had I not been very familiar with AG Grid. But that, um, that was probably the easiest part, getting to work with AG Grid. Doing all the other, that was also the fun part, getting to work with AG Grid as well. But I'd say the, the more difficult part was the sort of the logistics of the project, how to get the data, the best way to get the data and store the data and make it efficient. As you can see, it's actually... I'd say it's quite fast working in Firebase with all the data that it has to retrieve. So that was probably the tricky part. Cool. So if people look at the source code, they're going to see a front end and a back end. And your back end is using, uh, what is it, Rapid API to pull in the information from Firebase. And it does that, what, on a daily basis? So why, yes, I did say that this data is retrieved from Firebase, not from Rapid API. So Rapid API stores all the data that I'm using here. Um, it contains data for all sorts of things, but I'm specifically using the data for football um, players and teams. So I have a back-end project, which is a Firebase project, and I have a few functions, scheduled functions there that run daily. Those run daily, get the data from Rapid API and stores it in Firebase for me. Then when someone uses this app, they can the data will be free directly from Firebase instead of Rapid API. Because this data doesn't change often, it changes on a daily basis. So my schedule functions in Firebase needs to only run on a daily basis to update the data daily. Um, otherwise, you know, if a thousand people come to this website a day, it will make thousands of API calls to Rapid API, which then they charge per API call. So it will end up costing me a lot of money, um, which is not something I'm particularly interested in doing for a side project now. 
Cool. And because you're putting it all in AG Grid, you're giving the data analysis and exploration to the user to do. So you've got the kind of hidden feature there that you've enabled charts so people can create ad hoc charts from this. Yes, of course, people can create ad hoc charts. There's, I'm going to let's take a look at the ad hoc charts first. So we're looking at England, the Premier League, we're looking at all players. Let's group by the nationality. And I want to know how many goals have been scored per nationality. So if we get the number of goals, drag it into values. So we're pivoting. We have the sum of goals. And then what we can do is highlight. There's quite a few teams here, I didn't realize. Uh, and then let's put this into, let's put it in a pie chart. Let's see how that looks. And let's expand this out a bit so we can see a bit more stuff. We can see here the majority of goals are being scored by English club. Brazil is there. Portugal has a good share of it. Um, so from this, we've just gone and seen for the Premier League how many goals are scored by which nationality, and we'll put it straight into a pie chart. You can put it on a bar chart or anything. There's a few, you can change that here. So if we want to put it on a column bar chart or a stack bar chart. We can do all sorts of things with it. There's many different types of charts available. Scatter chart, which is not appropriate for this, I'd say. Um, areas, I don't know, wherever you, wherever you fancy you can put it into. But the benefit for you as a programmer is you didn't have to do anything to make that happen. No, what? so all of this functionality comes straight with AG Grid. I, all I did was implement a grid. And now people can just go and create as many graphs and charts as they like using all the different data that they like. I will say one thing. Um, I have included some uh, charts in here. I believe they're from the standalone charts library. So what we can do is instead of showing, so at the moment, I, uh, I'm showing the, the, the graphs. But if we have this toggle here, if we click this, say show graph, we can see all the data now, as you can see, is very Hard to see anything here. That's just because there's so many players here. Uh, let's do top 20 scorers. Here we go. That's much better. We can see here a bar chart of all the uh, top 20 goal scorers. You could easily do this yourself without even clicking this button. Hit toggle button here. Or you could just toggle and straight away see the data so we can see all the top 20 goal scorers now as a bar chart. Bar chart. Or now this is really interesting in when it comes to football in a scatter chart. What this is doing is this is looking at the number of goals scored per minute. So the higher you are, the more to the right you are, and the higher you are, the better you are, and the bigger your circle. So this is used in football a lot. And this is one thing I found really useful. I'm going to show you one more chart now. If I click top 20 goal scorers, and I'll come back to... Um, so now we're looking again at the English, just the table, the top 20, the, the 20 teams in the Premier League. If we click on the show graph button now, we don't see scatter graph or bar charts. We only see, um, can you remind me what this chart is called? I have no uh, idea. It's, it's a line chart, sorry. Yes, that's it. As, again, there's many teams here. That's why we, with the data is a bit um, rough, let's just say. But if we use this here, this is it's called a timeline. Uh, I believe I forgot the specific name. We can drag it down and see just the last uh, 20, the last 10, uh, match days of the league, or let's actually just make it more interesting. Let's look at the first 10 match days of the league and see how teams perform. This is also used in football a lot, and I found it very interesting indeed. So we say we, we're looking now at the first 10, and now we can see which team started well, which teams done better than others, and how they progressed overall. Uh, we can see here Chelsea were leading after game week 10, even though they had a slightly rough start at the beginning. Um, so that's how you view charts in Football Stats Direct. And that um, chart there, that's um, using AG Charts, which is a community product. Anyone has access to that for free. Yep, that's correct. So this is a standalone chart now that it's using, and it is the community version, yes, because I would have used the Enterprise, but I didn't need to. And the slider at the bottom, does that come with the charts out the box? This comes with, this is part of AG, uh, AG Charts, yes. I did not implement this myself. Um, cool. you enable a simple property and it's there for you to use cool so you also if we went back to the grid have implemented uh, custom cell renderers to show the little icons next to the names let's look at a few of the cell renderers that I had to implement so one of them is this yes 
the team name um, which was so you want the logo in there which comes from a url uh, an external url and then you have the team name that's one of my cell renders another one was the form here um i basically the data is for me comes in as wwl ww and then from that i create a custom cell renderer which then displays uh, some divs with some background and some border radius to display these circles basically to make it more interesting and is that goal difference also a cell renderer or do you add plus 35 in as the string uh i don't know off the top i don't remember that about my head but i do remember what minus why you're pluses. mentioning that oh let's look at something similar uh let's do show all stats um do you remember something now this this the weight here is not a custom cell renderer but it does have value getters because if i want to order what i'd need to do then is to get this numeric value and or for the ordering while the value that is used to display the value which is the how did just so many of if you value get a value setter value renderer so there'd render. be the value getter for using for sorting the, yes exactly i had to implement that myself and similarly with the height as well because you add some centimeters and kg into there so you need a different value getter to get a numeric value for sorting and filtering etc yeah i guess it depends on the data that's coming from the api because that could just be a number in which case you would create a cell renderer to add on the centimeters but if the value that's coming in from the api is 188 space centimeters then you would implement a value getter to make the sorting easier because then it could sort numerically yes that's correct yeah cool um so is there anything else to cover in there i mean because it's pulling the data in it's rendering it um a lot of the information is coming from ag grid but you've had to do work on the gui and all of this is in react is that right this is all written in React, correct. Um, I started from using the simple React boiler, boilerplate um, template available, and then added AG Grid in and a few of these buttons. I believe this is using Google, um, what's Google's main theme name? Google Material Design, that's what it's using, yes. Uh, so it's using React, Material Design, and AG Grid. Those are the parts of the project. Cool. So is there anything else? So I see you've got repositories up in the tab. If you could, you jump over to that, then we'll see where the code is. But I don't know that we should jump into the code. So we have two projects here. We have the football stats direct, which is the React project, and football stats direct backend, which is the Firebase project where the schedule functions run. If we look at football stats direct, um, you can see here this is basically it. Um, let's go into it a bit deeper. Um, and then into the source. So we have, there's a few, it's, it's very simple. There's a simple, single app page, which is here. Then there's the about page, which is a few gifts of uh, a few ideas of some of the data analysis you can perform. And then, so those are the main pages. So if we go to app, which is where the entire home page lives, we can see all the, um, data manipulation here, and we can see if we go right down to the bottom, we have AG Grid React here with all the uh, column properties and definitions of what we need. Cool, so this is a good example project. People want to see how you use TypeScript and React and AG Grid and connecting to an API at the same time. Oh yes, definitely, especially with uh, TypeScript as well. I don't work without TypeScript, so I definitely recommend it as well. Cool. And thanks for that. So is there anything else we should look at? Because I think I'm running out of questions. I think that is pretty much everything. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything. Um, basically, it's using an API, getting data, plugging it into AG Grid and letting the user do whatever they want with it. So I guess the only other question then is to finish off, what is the future of this? Is this something you're going to continue working on? This is... No, I would say... I think I've done everything I'd like to do with it for now. Um, one other item that I really wanted to get in for the football fans out there that know this 
So let's turn off all these stats. There we go, it's pretty simpler. Um, so we can see here each team, how many goals they scored for. What I would like to do is the expected goals that they would have scored, but that data is really hard to obtain. I've reached out to several sources, but none of them have really brought back to me, so they don't want to give you the data. But if I was to improve this, then that's one thing um, I would probably do, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon in the future. So I think this is a project that's just going to live on forever. Um, I, I use it occasionally to just look at a few stats here and there, but I think that, that that's pretty much the end of it for me. Cool. Excellent. Thanks very much. So everyone can find you at vicas.co.uk and we can see the URL there. It's footballstatsdirect.com. So any football fans can go in and explore the up-to-date data for the different leagues. Correct. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, Vikas. That was useful. No worries. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks. Here we go. Bye. Thank <music> you.